Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Marduk, and of course this time we are now going to head back through the Crimson Peak and make our way to the place where we found that trapped soul and, well, supposedly it's some really evil person. So I'm sure nothing will go wrong here, right? We have some Lava Lobs here and a Temperance of the Water Variety. So let's maybe use the Solar Flare against these Lava Lobs. That seems like that's typically the way to go, and although I missed the reaction, Solar has us covered in terms of the damage. Burn, been experimenting a bit with your green lightning, trying to boost the damage on it. How much is it at this stage? Not enough, is still the answer. I think we may have some ways to improve that though going forward, so let's take a stop after this fight, see if we can improve it a little bit further. As for Donovan, probably makes sense for you to target the Temperance, let's just double check. With regards to fire damage or physical, fire damage could come from one of Donovan's magic skills, however of course if you were to use his physical attack, what with us deactivating his soul strike that would mean that it would be just plain physical elemental and that is technically a little bit better so let's go that route temperance will go next obviously use regen which is interesting we don't see that too often of course it does mean it's not attacking which is maybe a little bit preferable and mardek we've established previously you are not capable of taking out those lava blobs so let's just take out the temperance instead and yeah the party-wide fire spells, not so scary anymore, what with all of our fire resistance. So, we can also Solar Flare, get rid of you. Definitely making some improvements defensively in that way. The offense may be still a little bit to be desired. Of course, we'd preferably be taking out those Lava Blobs before they get a chance to actually do those attacks. Burn Master's 20% experience, so that does mean, notably, that we could, say, take off the Candria, though, which is what was given him that skill. So let's do that. And then what I was thinking was that we might be able to throw on a little bit more in the way of spirit boosting or magic boosting abilities and items. So, a few things that come to mind would be the scoping lens, which is the hat that we got from Mariador. And it is quite powerful because although just one defense, one magic defense isn't a lot, and Plus one agility is kind of useful, resistance to blindness and curse, also a little bit useful. However, most notably gives the plus 10% magic damage reaction, so that is something that Solar has not yet learned. Let's throw that on them, because we've seen that Solar is certainly our most consistent damage dealer with spells, but even on occasion, still falls somewhat short of taking people out with one hit, and therefore maybe getting 10% higher damage, even when we hit the low end of the range of damage might be enough, so that sounds like a useful boost. The other thing is that the Feather Crest, this being the helmet that we got from Gloria originally, definitely a fair bit stronger in terms of the defense and magic defense, but has the plus 20% magic reaction, and therefore Solar has already learned it, but if we say we're to put that on Vern, that could be quite useful for, say, the Green Lightning that we're just trying to take people out with. Also gives plus one spirit, so we're not sacrificing anything on that front, because I believe Vern's current helmet does have plus one spirit. We'll lose a little bit in the way of strength and vitality and agility, but I think that's an okay sacrifice. And now that we've gotten rid of the Candriathope, might there be something else that we could put there as well to boost spirit? Candriathope was, I believe, giving one spirit. However, there might be other ways for us to boost further. Those being either the Sapphire Bangle, which is, of course, water-themed, yes. But three magic defense and three defense is not bad. Plus 20% MP could even be useful because we've seen that Vern has at times been a little bit low on MP. And then the plus three spirit and additional MP is great. The water resistance, that part maybe not so relevant, but you see there, his MP almost doubles when he throws that on. And that is even before we say, get rid of 20% experience and put on 20% MP instead. Oh, except he's just shy having the RP to pull that off, so maybe for now we'll leave on 20% experience and hopefully Vern will level up soon and we'll get the chance to gain another RP and throw that on as well. Resist fire, obviously that's staying for the time being, but my hope is with that extra spirit, now bumping Vern up to 16, that might be enough in addition to his first magic offensive reaction. So. That hopefully will make it so that Vern can be a little bit more of a natural spellcaster. Of course, it took a little while for us to get there. And remind me, I think it is over to this side? 
where we make our way over to that cage soul. I may not be remembering properly, but we can double check here. Hmm. Is this the case? In fact, I'm not even sure we've been all the way through here. Because I see that we have checked this top right. In fact, I think this is where we came into this area originally, but have we gone through this route? I thought that this was not explored previously. Except this is also where we came in initially? Why are there so many grayed out areas then? That's odd. Okay. Ignore that then. Let's head back on up and maybe we'll get the chance to run into a few more fights in that case and get the chance to experiment against, yes, say, a lava blob. Well, it probably does still make sense to take it out with Solar, because that's a sure thing. Whereas with Fern, it might be close now. I think it will be very close, because we saw he was, what, about 30 or so damage shy of being able to take one out before, and plus 20% damage would get him pretty darn close, I think, what with his slightly over 100 damage he was dealing before. So we'll see. It's going to come down to, I think, mostly just how much extra damage he also gets from the spirit boost that we gave him. But for now, I think, Donovan, you are still the trickiest person to try to attack with. Fire Opal, can we deal enough damage against that? Mm, I still don't think so, so I think mostly we're just attacking one of these guys with the hopes of dealing some damage to set other people up. That wizard goes next and heals Vern, so that's no problem. Vern, yeah, I think in this occasion, you're going for the physical attacks. No problem there. Oh, I missed that one, but doesn't matter because it was healing Vern anyway, because it was fire elemental. Mardek, I think you probably finish off the Amberistal. That leaves just the Fire Opal now. And technically speaking, physical attacks not as effective, but if we don't need to spend the MP, then maybe we take this opportunity to not spend the MP. And we see that we had many people level up recently, so it will be a little while until we get the next level, but Vern with his additional experience that we're still putting on could mean that it'll happen a little bit quicker, at least for him specifically, and it looked like he does have the most experience of anyone in the party right now. So, what is the actual direction which we are supposed to go here? Is it up here? Must be, right? There's so many doors in this area that it is quite easy to get confused trying to navigate around it. Okay, this will probably be an opportunity for Vern to test out his green lightning in full. Because we'll take out one Lava Blob with Solar. They do have the same amount of HP. There's no reason to target one over the other. Donovan, you're still on Temperance Duty. Oh, except it does, of course, help when you hit. So Green Lightning. 143 is the match number. Like I said before, I think it's going to be really close to that much damage here. Oh, and it is just enough. So that is big. Being able to take those guys out now in one turn with Burn means that Oftentimes, we'll see that they don't have a chance to take a turn. So that could be a real difference maker in terms of minimizing the amount of damage that we take. And the Temperance, no big deal. Opts to use regen, so no damage taken from this guy. And so it did seem like Vern's damage was fairly consistent and that the range is not very high between the, the high and the low end of his attacks there with Green Lightning. So I'd like to believe that that's an indication that, generally speaking, we can still rely on him to take those guys out. The Lava Blobs, however, it's close enough that if there's any range at all, we are perhaps at risk of sometimes falling just short. We'll have to see, though. Magmasards, I think no matter what, Donovan, you're not taking these guys out in one hit, so we probably target the one with the most HP and just get into close enough range for, say, Marduk to finish it off. Quite already if you opt to heal us. Bardock, however, does not heal. His resistance being the lowest. But I think with Vern, we should be able to take one of these guys out. Single-handedly. And Bardock, I think you do target this one here. Because you do not quite have enough damage. Well, you would have on this one, because it did have the lowest HP of everyone else. But if we were targeting one of the higher HP ones, then maybe not so much. Solar there came close. In fact, if we did not have the additional magic offensive reaction that we just put on Solar, I think Solar would have fallen short on that occasion. 
So again, all the more reason to make sure that we are equipping with all of the most recent and most powerful of skills. Okay, so is it this door here? It might be. Like I said, I'm certainly starting to lose track of them at this rate. But with how many there are and how they crisscross into different areas. Mm, we've been here before, yes. Is this where we are trying to go, though? I couldn't tell you one way or the other. Let's give it a shot going... Mm, I think it's down into the right-ish. Is it through here? Is it through here? I remember that this is not actually a connection here. So we can't make it to this purple area. And it was pretty much just the switch, I think. It's down that route, so... I want to say maybe near where that red switch was. But I feel like we're still not quite going in the right direction. So we'll try it out, but I feel like I'm admittedly getting a little bit lost in this maze. But at the very least, gives us more opportunity to... Whoa! Go triple temperance here. Don't think we've ever seen this before. And they're all air temperances. And what with agility, typically being the attribute that is affiliated with air, that means that these guys are slightly speedier than usual. They're on 20 agility and 10 everything else, therefore they went first. So, how do we take them out, though? They are, in terms of resistances, of course, very resistant to air. However, they are very weak to fire, which is very convenient for Donovan. They're also resistant to earth, which means that, Solar, you're gonna have to use a magic ability here, I would think. So, they all have the same amount of HP. Take your pick. Not sure you're gonna deal enough damage here. Burn actually got paralyzed. I did not realize that. So he may or may not be able to take his turn here. Might be a bit concerning. Burn will be meaningful this time around. And not quite enough damage, unfortunately. Burn fortunately does have the chance to take a turn. And his physical attack is air elemental, so we don't want to go that route. Means that we either want to use Smite Evil or Green Lightning. Green Lightning is Earth, and these guys are resistant to Earth, so not that either. Yeah, so that means even though these guys are not dark or undead, it does make sense to go with Smite Evil, just to make it non-air elemental. And, well, we're in an interesting place here. Everyone is on low HP, but no one is down yet. Marduk, take your pick. I was gonna say, if you missed, we would not be looking so great right now. Probably shouldn't have split our damage quite as much as we did, but of course didn't know exactly how much damage we would deal against these guys. This does hurt a bit, because they're so weak, and yet Solar cannot take them out with a physical attack, because it will be Earth Elemental and deal zero damage. So maybe we even take a turn to restore some MP with Spirit Graph, because Solar's MP is actually starting to drop a little bit low here. Donovan, for the most part, not too often that we get the opportunity to put much use to burn, so sure. Let's do it there. Your MP is not going to be too much of an issue for that reason. Burn. Similarly, it is mostly those green lightnings against the lava blobs that we're going to need it for, but other than that, you're mostly using physical attack, so no problem there. Potion potions, also not bad. As for whether we are headed in the right direction, though. Let's see. That's where we're looking to get. So, I know that we can't make it from this angle, but yeah, it seems like for some reason, bits and pieces of our map are appearing unexplored, even though I know for a fact we've gone down here. I suspect that there is a door down there somewhere. And will it ultimately allow us to wind back around to get to that spot with the NPC? I don't recall. I think it is, well, possibly. No, this is just loot we've of course already taken so it's not here but at least this helps us set our sights a little more effectively on our target so it is over to the left from here but remember that the door is of course further down and therefore I think what we're gonna need is if we say go through here we need a door that is like right around there or so if you can kind of picture how these different rooms piece together so, we'll look for something that fits that bill. I think it does mean that we'll have to go down 
back through the way that we came previously. Okay, lots of lava blobs here, so again, Vern definitely will have the opportunity to take some out here. And I think we definitely want to get rid of the one with the most HP with Solar. It's 131. I think Vern was pretty well clear of that in terms of how much damage he was dealing. It was, what, in the 140s last time? And we'll burn one of them just to lower its defense in case that becomes relevant. So green lightning, how much damage? 138, okay. Again, it is enough, but it is close. And Vern is getting a little bit closer now to leveling up, which might mean that we could be able to throw on some additional reactions soon or other skills. Okay, and then Solar, yes, you could. Solar Flare here. However, I'm wondering if maybe Vern, after having spent a fair bit of MP, might be worth giving him some additional MP here. It does mean that we'll have to use Vern to take this Lava Blob out, but it also gives us another chance to use a burn, get closer to mastering the ability with Donovan, and the whole thing that I forgot about was how Vern is currently paralyzed. So, about that, you know, maybe we should have done something about that in between fights, because we did see in the previous one. It does mean that the lava splatter does hit us again, but for the most part, that's not a huge concern. Also, theoretically means we could take another turn to boost the MP of Vern, and does also mean that Donvin can use another Vern. And Vern with extra spirit now, after being spirit crafted a couple times, is up to 23. So we should see that this green lightning is a fair bit more powerful than it was previously. So don't read into that 325, too much at least. That is with the help of Solar. A little bit of mana barriers as well, useful for restoring MP the more traditional way. So I think what we're looking to do is drop down here, and then we're looking for a door that connects over to the right. I think we need to go down here and then look for, yeah, just take it one room at a time, basically. Otherwise, I think we'll very easily get further lost. It didn't seem like it was too much of a trek from where the Hermit was previously, but could be wrong about that. Huh. So this is the room that we just came from. I thought we did originally try going this way, but it didn't work out so well for us. Is it even up here? I mean, this looks like it's in the opposite direction, right? But if it has a door that is all the way to the right side of that room relatively early on, then if we're trying to think connecting all the different rooms together, then that might roughly equate to where the NPC is. That might be worth a shot. So I don't think it's further to the right. I'm pretty sure we tested that earlier and that only leads us the way that we came in. And that would be a little bit odd if it was very close to where we came in when it seems like this is one of the final things we want to do in the Crimson Peak. So, against these guys, Solar Flare, probably. Question is just, against whom? Because, well, the Charred Bones are next. So let's probably take one of them out here. That way we have fewer guys attacking us. And he uses Rage Gord against Marduk. That probably isn't a bad thing. We're going to use a normal attack with Marduk anyway. And doubling his damage, or close to his... Also, probably not terrible. So let's target the Magmazard, and even with the crit, Donovan falls a little bit short. Unfortunate. Burn. Can you take these guys out? The charred bones with a normal attack. How effective is air? Not terribly effective, and these guys do have 30 defense, so I do think that you need to go disrupt undead. No problem there. Marduk will, of course, auto attack. What with the Rage Cord, but certainly enough power with that. Okay. So fingers crossed that it turns out that up here is the right way to go. A little bit misleading. Maybe let's stop back off at the Hermit's area just to take a quick trip to heal. Okay. So we head back up this way. And what I was saying is, once we make it through here, we're looking for a door that is over to the right very early on. Well, except no, this is just loot. So of course we're not going to find it here. Hmm. Yup. Consider us well and truly lost in that case. I 
think. What do we have left? Do we go down the route that we first came down? Uh, we could try. I thought we went there earlier, but at this rate, I'm losing track. All right, solar flare. Let's just take some of these guys out in the meantime. So one down, we've established that even with a crit, Donovan cannot take these guys out in one turn, unfortunate. I think that was against one of the Magmazards that was a relatively high level and had relatively high HP, so these guys that are on the lower end maybe still would have been able to pull it off, but then again, of course he didn't crit. And the physical attacks are actually somewhat dangerous. 100 damage is nothing to snuff at, particularly against someone like Solar, who has the least HP. Burn. Should be able to get this guy, absolutely. Mardek, I would think, same thing. Yep, no problem there. Solar, you don't need to use a physical attack, but you probably could to save some MP. And we could theoretically heal Donovan, but I think that's probably still unnecessary at this stage. Okay, so let's try going right. I think it's wrong, but at this point, uh, all bets are off, so <laughs> we'll give it a shot. We go maybe up and to the right here. And then we look for a door that is, what, on the left? I don't know. But this is it. Okay, well, that's what I get for trying to assume that this was the wrong direction, but here we go. As for how exactly this is going to play out, well, we'll just have to see. You... Am I... Free? Denarius Thelemesenthine. You are free. I... I am free! I... Sweet freedom. <laughs> Thank you, pawns. From the bottom of my pitch black heart. But this means nothing. I am now going to resume what I started before that fool trapped me away. I will snatch the fire crystal for myself and use it to take over the world. Oh. Yeah, you know, that probably would make sense that, you know, the hermit who's like technically the shaman of this area and supposed to protect like the crystal and whatnot might have, say, trapped this person specifically because did not want this person to steal the fire crystal, and now that we freed them, yeah, they're gonna just turn around and try to do it again. You cannot stop me. I can see it in your eyes. You want to stop me. You want to. You regret this. You can't. You can't stop me. You will die first. Yeah, probably should have expected that. So, it is a mini boss of sorts. It is the Wretched Soul. Let's take a look. 2,600 HP. That's a fair bit. A lot of spirit, notably, so we're probably expecting some spells for him to use against us. Fairly high attack as well, though. 20 defense will be somewhat difficult to deal damage with physical attacks, whereas magic is a little bit preferable. Some resistance to everything across the board, particularly Earth. Light is the best thing to use against him, it would seem. And dark, definitely not the way to go. So interesting in that... This is definitely not a type of enemy that is fire-centric like so many that we've seen in this area before. A lot more like others that we saw back in Chapter 2, really, with all the dark enemies. It is also a spirit, and I know that at one point in time, Marduk had Quarry Spirit on. Don't know if we still have that active or not. So, what ought we do here? Solar Flare should be very effective, I would think. 800 damage, not bad. Did not look at how quick this guy is. He is using haste, so we will go twice. But he's slower than Vern, so that's good to see and that we'll have a few more opportunities to deal damage. So, Vern would probably be helpful. He will deal some damage. He does have 50% fire resistance, but to remove defense could be helpful for both Vern and Marduk. As a bit of a setup, minus three defense, only a little over 100 damage is not great, but it does help with, say, Smite Evil. Allowing that to deal more damage and... Yeah, not so bad. I'd say. Wretched Skull is a plot item, so we'll take a look at that in a second, and also some Dark Essence, sure. Yeah, so, uh, turns out Vern is OP against Dark Enemies. We kinda already knew this, but in case you didn't remember, yeah, he does that. So, let's take a closer look at that plot item there. So, 
It's the Wretched Skull, the skull of a powerful undead spellcaster. Well, I mean, like, powerful... A little bit debatable there, perhaps. It still retains a lot of the magical power that he kept in his head in life and in undead, and it reeks of evil. Okay. Interesting. So, I believe, in fact, if we were to say, look at our quests here, that is one of the ingredients that we needed for one of these things. Was it... The Soul Cage, I want to say? Skull of a Truly Wicked Mortal? I believe so. So, that means that I'm pretty sure we now have all the ingredients that we need in order to complete that quest, and we will, in order to do that, need to go back up to the Northern Continent to Meridor's workshop. So we can now do that. Let's just make a point, though, of checking back over at the Hermit, see if he has anything to say about us, you know, freeing and then defeating that wretched soul. Okay, so for Solar, Let's take out the Lava Blob. No problem. Next, the Amber Crystal is the quickest, but doesn't hit, so good to see. Donovan, I mean, could deliberately burn just for the sake of getting closer to mastering this. It does take 20 uses, and it's been tough to find opportunities to squeeze this in, because there have been so many enemies that are resistant to fire. And, well, you can wait a little bit longer. Tax Marduk, but not a huge deal there. Burn. I'm tempted to see what green lightning is like, of course, but maybe we hold off for the time being and say, get rid of the fire opal instead before it has a chance to go. Marduk. Amberistal, maybe? Okay, enough damage to take that out in one hit. Good to see. And Solar, do you have enough damage to take this guy out? I'm not sure you do, but let's give it a shot. Just short. Poison would help, and assuming Donovan hits, though, shouldn't be an issue. Yep. Okay. Pick up the slime jam, good to see. And so now we've established that, what, the correct route is not here, but over here. And then we'll make our way back to the Hermit. Will he have anything to say? I'd like to believe so, after he was instructing us to basically do the dirty work for him, he was saying, yeah, theoretically, this is my responsibility to protect this area and get rid of all the evil people trying to steal the fire crystal, but I mean, we did just do it for him, so I would like to believe that they might have someone to thank us with. Solar Flare, physical attack, depends who we're looking to attack. Solar Flare, I think, would be more effective against the Opals, whereas a physical attack would be better against the Amberistals. Amberistal does go next, however, I don't think Solar is going to have enough damage to take it out, so maybe we take out a Fire Opal instead. Play him against Marduk. Yeah, he'll live. Donovan. Probably use a physical attack against, say, the Amberistal here. If you could hit. Vern, on the other hand, you can certainly take out a Fire Opal. Before it gets a chance to go, and Marduk, we saw you take one of these guys out in one hit last time. Yep, you can still do it. Okay. So onward we go. And I believe the Hermit is just over here. Yep, here's his cave. So, we did it. Do you have anything to say about it? You freed it, eh? Oh, good, good. That's uh, one loaf off my chest. Of bread? Bread of the mine. Thoughts, rather. Yes. Whatever foul gods await in the dreadful necropolis that awaits him can do with him as they see fit now, and his soul can flitter away to other existences as it should be. Hmm, okay. Speaking of which, here, have this lovely smooth stone. Go on, have it. Have it harder. Excuse me? I don't need it anymore. Can't activate it anyway. And you did me a favor, so it's yours. Stop arguing with me and take it, for Volko's sake. Okay, so it is a new dreamstone. And that is, of course, something that we'd want to make a point of checking out. So let's do that now. We did, of course, deliberately delay looking at one that we picked up. I believe this was in the Dark Temple previously. This one, I think, is probably fair game. They are kinda sorta in chronological order in terms of 
plot significance. So although we got this one a little while ago, you see that there are several blank places in between and therefore that's why I'm saying we might want to wait just a little bit longer before we look at it. This one is a little bit closer to the ones we've already picked up, so let's give this a look. Finally, I'm a knight at long last. I'll be glad to see the back of these guard missions. There's just something very unsatisfying about helping old women to get to the shops or stopping bar brawls. Nothing grand at all. With this new rank, grander adventures await for more opportunities for excitement. And for respect. I have earned this, so it's important that I have, and that people will regard me highly for what I've done. Sure, I could get tons of respect, if I could even call it that, without any effort at all if I wanted, by blood alone, but I've always found that to be so exploitative. It is unfair that chance alone should grant us such boons. We must earn them. Valor, not blood, is what makes a man. One's blood only deserves esteem when spilled for one's values. I think I got this from my mother. She was always complaining at father when he flaunted his excellence all over the place and insisted that I got no more than the other children. I was glad. I really was. Because otherwise, I'd have had possessions, yes, but children are unforgiving and would surely have ostracized me. Living the way she thought most respectable is the best way I can think of to honor her memory. So here I am, earning my respect, and doing a fine job of it, if I do say so myself. I have colleagues, and we get along, all because I sacrifice my hereditary power. If I'd kept it, maybe I'd not even have met Charlotte. Charla. My oldest friend. She's in the guard because of me. Now a knight, too. We shared our ceremony, just like so many other things. She's always there with me. I see the way she looks at me recently, and I'm sure she sees the way I reciprocate. And yet, we go nowhere. Is it because we've grown too comfortable with being best friends, and it's awkward to progress beyond that? Or could I perhaps say I am afraid of her finding out my little secret, especially after hiding it for basically all my life? Is it something to worry about? Perhaps not. Perhaps I should tell her how I feel about her one of these days. Or I get the distinct feeling that she's not going to be telling me anytime soon. I've always found her reticence to be cute, yet it sure can get in the way at times. Says I, as if it is her who's expected to make the move. No, that's the man's job. That's good and right and proper. And so I shall be the one to bring this up openly. Huh. Here's me speaking of what's right and proper. If I believed in any of that, well... Ah, the mission! I've got to continue preparing. Okay, so... Some music that we haven't heard much of, but certainly some names that we have heard. You guys know who that one might have been? I don't know, I'll leave you to it. I think this is probably a good place for us to leave off here. So with the next one, we might be on our way back up north.